Greetings, everyone. This is Dr. Kevin McNulty, and it is exciting to be with you today. I believe this is going to be a life-changing moment because it's going to be a life-changing word. And in this, when we come together like this, God has always showed up, and Jesus has always revealed himself to be to you what you need him to be, to lift you if you feel down, to heal you if you feel sick, to give you peace if you feel worried, because that's what he is. He is the answer to the problems of this earth. And today, we're going to talk about a very special message to me, a, a message that's very close to my heart. Of course, there are good messages. There are good moments in our life. But the greatest thing in my life that I, I can say that has changed my life is mentorship, a good mentor. And I want to talk with you these next 10 minutes about that mentorship that can change your life. And maybe at the end of this, you'll want to connect with me and uh, you'll want me to be your mentor, and I'll be glad to do that. Some of it will be right here in the United States. Other times it will be on the air where we are right now. But that, that mentorship can really transform you like it transformed me. I actually started the, the value, understanding the value of mentorship with, with a guy who you would say would not be considered a mentor. He was a Ford on, worked on, at a Ford Motor Company on a night shift. But during the day, he wanted to do something for young boys. And he went to the, the school I was at, and I was 11 years old, and he just said, how many 11-year-old boys here want to play tennis? And I raised up my hand. I had never thought about the sport. And uh, so he said, come on out to the courts tomorrow, and I'm going to train you. I'm going to teach you. Well, I had duck feet. I had all sorts of problems <laughs> that, I, that I was experiencing. And, uh, and he looked at me, and his wife looked at me, and they said, oh, he's never going to make it. And, uh, but I, yet I had this desire to learn. And so I kept hitting those balls, hitting those balls, until the tournament where they decided, well, he's not going to make it. Let's put him against the number one player and make it a rule that if you lose today, you're out of the program. Well, that number one player never showed up. He got hit with a baseball the night before. So I won by default, and then I won the tournament. And so I, he began his reluctant mentorship of me, but it turned out into a wonderful experience experience because I, I might not have had the initial talent, but I did have the desire and I did have the willingness to learn. I hope you have that desire. I hope there is a, a desire that's burning within your life right now, a, something that you want to see happen in your life, something that you're willing to pay a price for. I would go to school in the, after, in the mornings, but before the mornings, I would have to go work. I did four different routes, paper routes, plus uh, do dishes for a local uh, restaurant. And so I had five different jobs every day. <laughs> And, and yet I didn't complain about it because I was putting my way through school. And in that school, I was learning the disciplines of education. But all these things didn't mean anything compared to the disciplines of learning how to play tennis. I ended up being the captain of the team and number one tennis player at Michigan State University during the time when I was there. And it was a great, great reward. Opened up all sorts of doors and, and, a, and a future. But... Even then, even with that, I had an experience in that, in that as I was wrapping up that part of my life where I worked so hard for, then another beginning started in my life. And another beginning, you might say, oh, I have done everything, and now I, I'm just retired, now I'm just uh, rejected, now I'm just uh, uh, nothing. But listen, there's always a second chance. There's always a new start. There's always a beginning. If there's a desire, if there's a passion that you can follow, it will open up another door for you. So it, on a tennis court is when I met Jesus Christ. Actually, I didn't meet him. It's when I heard his voice there. And he said, read the Bible, read the Bible, read the Bible. Well, I, he said that so often to me. I stopped the match looked at my opponent said, listen, somebody's talking to me. I can't see him, but he's saying, read the Bible. Isn't that crazy? Well, that man said, no, that's not crazy. He took me to his car, opened up the trunk, and inside were hundreds of Bibles and books, and they became my Bible school. 
And so after reading those, I discovered that this Jesus is alive, and that took me on a new adventure. That's why we call ourselves Christian Adventures. We go from step to step, from country to country, now over 65 nations, and from project to project, from, from burning desire to burning desire. Now we're starting here in America for the first time. If you're not here in America, I tell you, we will be coming to your, your nation for sure. But here in America, we're going to launch another their project, 50 states, 50 tents, 50 evangelists, and we're going to rock and roll here in the United States as well as in Europe, as well as in Eurasia, as well as continue to work in India, and I love to go back to Africa and see all the wonders of God, because where there is, where there is need, there is an answer to that need. Where there is weakness, there is strength to be given. Where there is sickness and disease, there is healing to be re received. And so uh, we've seen that happen for all these last 40 years and continue to see it. But we do it because why? Because we discover there's a passion and a desire and a mentor. Somebody who can train and, and teach you. And uh, I, I was so privileged to, for 17 years, have a mentor in Dr. T.L. Osborne. And he was, is considered to be one of the great, if not the greatest, uh, public uh, mass evangelist in the history of humanity. Probably more people stood, he has stood before more people and seen more miracles than anyone on the earth. And, and we were, my wife and I, Leslie, we had the opportunity not only to be there with him, not only to go ahead of him and set things up, but to preach on the same platform with him and to continue in whatever we started with him. We would preach that day also. We preached the conferences, the crusades, the miracle meetings, all together. It was quite a, quite a rejoicing. But I tell you what, it dealt with a lot of mentorship, and uh, that is a, a, a lot of difficulty sometimes. Because uh, it's not, um, you don't, a mentor doesn't need you. You need a mentor, and that requires learning, not from the things you do right, but learning from the things you do wrong. So uh, I was blessed with this mentorship in tennis. I was blessed with the mentorship in coach, in, in actually in church. And then I was blessed with the mentorship in, in, in miracle evangelism. And so that's what I want to talk to you today, just a few points. We, I've, I've got so much to say on this, but let me just say this, that you can get one point, it can change your life. I know this, I, was, I just wrote this down over here, that, uh, that when you, uh, uh, the keys to rise and walk in your future, uh, to, to stand up and walk with your future is this. You got to find. You, you're going to want confidence in order to, to make that future happen, and this is what you're going to need. Find the source of your identity. Find the source of your identity. What can you see yourself doing? What is faith? Faith is actually seeing something. What you see. That's why God said to Abraham, took him up to a high mountain, and says, "Look to the east. Look to the west. Look to the north. Look to the south. Whatever you see, that you can have." That's why when He took the people, the children of Israel, across the river, and they said, He said to the, to the city of Jericho, He said, "Walk around that seven times." Why? Because walking was going to knock down the walls. No, but He wanted the people, his people, to get a vision of those walls falling. So for seven times, seven days, they walked around those walls until on that seventh day the walls all caved in. God wants you to have a picture of your future, and that's called mentorship. It could be like me the first time. You know, you're just, I'm being mentored by books. Whatever I saw that God did in a book, I said, you're going to do in my life. It wasn't written for history. It was written for experience, and that's, that's an attitude adjustment you've got to have. That you're not getting educated for the sake of knowledge. No, you're getting educated for the sake of duplicating experiences that you want to have happen in your life. I hope you're enjoying this. Please contact us, and uh, the, I'm sure they're going to give you ways of reaching out to us as well. So ways to predict a person's future. Mentor is one way to predict a future. And uh, we see, in, we see in, the, in, the, the, in the Bible, we see where we, there, Elijah mentored Elijah. Moses mentored Joshua. Paul mentored Timothy. Okay, so mentors does not affirm what you are are doing right. He affirms what you are doing wrong and exposes that. Thank God when someone exposes to you what you're doing wrong. Why? So that you can correct it. 
That's like every time in tennis when I lost a match, lost a tournament, what I did was I went back to the wall, hit against the wall the, 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 the errors that I was doing in the strokes so that I could fix those errors. I wasn't mad about the errors. I, they were there revealing what I needed to fix. You might need to go somewhere and fix what's, what's, what's keeping you back. So that with Dr. G, with uh, with uh, Dr. T. L. Osborne, he taught me how to raise funds. Uh, yeah, I really didn't know how to raise funds for ministry until after working with him. He taught me how to uh, uh, do photo reports. He took me out one morning. He said he didn't like the photographer, so he's for for four hours. He took me into a cemetery, and we took photos in the cemetery so that he could he could train me in how to take a good photo of him preaching. Isn't that amazing? All these things you had to be learned. And uh, <clears throat> anyway, <clears throat> we, I can just, I'm looking at all the different mistakes I made. And you know what? You can remind yourself of the mistakes and, f and fix. Always take a notepad like me. Take them with you. And when you see a mistake you're making, write it down and say, let that memory of a mistake change into a memory of a, re of a, of a, of a great mystery that is now solved. And so that, that's what I do. I take a pen and a pencil all the time. What Jesus began, it says in the book of Acts, we are to continue. So in other words, he becomes our mentor by being our model. In other words, he becomes our standard. And so we have responsibility to build a bridge between whoever we are, are hearing and listening to to cross over to do what they're doing, not just listening to, not just to be a spectator, not just to be in a chair observing, but no, we are to listen with the idea of crossing over the bridge to get to be where we need to be. And uh, that is where I want you to think today. Today, as we close out this day, I want you to think about where do I need to be mentored? What steps am I making right now that are wrong steps that are holding me back? And how can I change those steps? And I encourage you this. Don't try to change everything at once. Just take one or take two and target, target one habit this week and concentrate. Benjamin Franklin, he worked on 13 habits all of his life. You can start on one this week and start changing that. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Make something new today. Make something new this week. Begin to mentor yourself if you can't find somebody. And eventually, somebody will find you. We love you. We bless you. We expect this to help you as you start on your journey. Let it be a Christian adventure. Let us know what your problem is. Let us know where you need mentored. We'll be glad to help you. God bless you. We love you. Keep in touch. This is Kevin McNulty.